All right. First Thessalonians 5.18. First Thessalonians 5.18. Now. Go ahead and read the whole verse if you want. And I want to pick on. I want to pick on uh, James here. Could you read the whole verse and, and translate it for us? Yes, sir. And Ponte, Eucharistata, Tutogar, Telema, Tu, and Christo Jesu, Ace, Humas. Uh, I translated that uh, give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Okay, and everything and all things give thanks. All right, now this is present imperative. What does that say? Present imperative. It's a continuous thing you do as by command. All right. In our notes above, I showed that the present imperative is, is commandment to continue doing something that you have been doing. So we can say that the Thessalonians have been giving thanks to God, and he's just saying, keep on. That's good. Keep on doing it. So we, we can drive a conclusion that they had been doing it by the present imperative. So that's a good thing. We can speak well for them, doesn't it? They were giving thanks in everything, everything they gave thanks. Now then, any questions? All right. For this, this giving thanks is the will of God. Now, let's look a little more carefully at this. This is the lema, and that's a will that one has determined, he has thought it out and decided to do it. Now, there are things that I'm inclined to do just by impulse. I might do them by impulse. But if I'm thinking more, that would be bulomai. But if I'm willing it out and, and cogitating on it, thinking about the matter, then that would be a thelo or thelema, thelema. That's a th it's from the verb thelo. Incidentally, we just had that verb in, in the very first lesson of our Greek, the first lesson, thelo. And so that's the will where you think it out. Okay? For this is the will of God. God has thought this out. And it is good for us to do it. Because everything God has us to do is good for us. So being thankful is probably even good for our health. That's my theory. I think it, it actually puts the right hormones into our blood and probably is helpful to us, our health even. But it's certainly helpful to our spiritual health. Okay? This is the will of God. I believe God made us that way. When we're thankful, it's good for us physically and certainly good for us spiritually. Right. In Christ Jesus, okay? In Christ Jesus. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, in could be translated by concerning you, but I'm going to leave it as in. How did you render it there, uh, James? I, in fact, uh, rendered it in Christ Jesus concerning you, just as you have it there. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Now, concerning is ice. It's directed at them. So it's toward them. I was a view to them. Concerning is not a bad translation, but I'm just saying the, ver the, the, uh, the word here is ice. This uh, preposition, it's to order with a view to you, okay? Right. Next one, we have in verses 19 through 22, instructions regarding prophets in the church. I believe this is talking about prophets in the church, All right? First Thessalonians 5, 19. Uh, Jer Jerry, can you take that? Okay. Uh, tell Numa me as 
Benuti, Benute, um, quench not the spirit. Right. I'm not sure I, that should be capital S or not, though. Well, that's a good question. That should be, to me, that's humans don't, you don't give up, don't quench your spirit, not Holy Spirit. I think, I think it could, don't quench the Holy Spirit giving you the prophecy. Could that be? No, it could be, I guess. So this is present imperative active again. So it's something they were doing. And may with the present imperative means to stop doing it. I notice right here in the middle of the screen there, and uh, it, it does that. May with the present imperative means to stop doing something. Okay. So whatever it was, they were doing it. Now they were being thankful. And so they were they were quenching the spirit, whether it's Holy Spirit or whether it's a disposition, a proper attitude. That's a good question, which it is. I've taken it to be the Holy Spirit. Okay, But the fact that it's capitalized, the word spirit is capitalized, doesn't prove anything except that the translators thought it was the Holy Spirit. That's all it proves. Why? Why do we know that? Because written in all caps anyway. Yeah, it was, originally. The original was all caps anyhow. So the upper lowercase distinction and our English translation is merely a man, a man's interpretation, the translator's interpretation. Okay. Right. I, I need help with that. So are you putting May with Sabinete? Yes. So so uh, stop quenching the spirit. Stop quenching the spirit. Okay. Yeah. So you combine those two. Yeah. Stop quenching the spirit. The spirit stopped quenching. Right? May the the negation always goes before the verb or the word it negates. It could be a verb or an infinitive or a participle. But may is uh, the only one that's used with infinitives and participles. And it's used with all of the moods except indicative. May is. Okay. All right. And notice here in the middle of the screen, may is a particle of qualified negation. Here's a, if you take the illustration here that uh, oh, A.T. Robertson used in his students, he said that if a guy asked a, a girl, he's courting her, and he asked her to marry him, and she says, may, and that means she's not decided yet, just qualified. I won't right now, but I might later. If she says, oh, he says he just will pick up his hat and go home because she's telling him, absolutely not, I won't marry you. Does that make sense? That's the difference between these two words here. All right. So May is qualified and uh, May is, who is objective dealing only with the facts, but May is subjective involving the will or thoughts. So it's telling us to change your mind or telling them to change their mind about quenching the spirit. Right. Any questions? Stop quenching the spirit is how I've translated it. Now notice here on the screen we have here with the negative May, the present imperative expressed the prohibition of act already begun. Do not continue doing it, is that is stop doing the action of the verb. If it's an act that has not yet begun, it will be heirs subjunctive, made with the heirs subjunctive. Okay. Right. It means they were quenching the spirit, and Paul was meant to stop quenching the spirit. If this is the Holy Spirit, it could be related to either miraculous activity or non-miraculous activity. But in the immediate context of verse 20, I, it appears that this is miraculous and it's dealing with prophesying. It appears to me, okay? All right, any comments or questions? So that this, for a prophet, uh, they had control over the prophecy when it would be done, as we see with, People who are 
prophets, there was a time, and for women who had this ability, there was a time, right. and that they were to hold and keep everything in order and done decently. Right. So they just kept it and, and kept it, I guess, is, and, and didn't let it come out That's at, possible. The right, at the that, right time. That, that is possible. Okay. If this is if this is prophesying, okay, uh, might be that they were not listening to them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, at Corinth, prophesying was not considered that valuable. Uh, Remember, the yeah. problem tongue speaking was to cast me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Paul had to tell him that's the law of the tongue problem. That's right. Yeah, okay. It's not, not uh, really that. It's it's important, but it's not near as important as prophesying. And Paul tells him that. Now, notice I footnoted this. And or stop quenching the spirit, lowercase spirit. In uh, if you're translating, what you've done is if you put it uppercase spirit, you've given your interpretation. And if you're if you're honest with people, you'll footnote it and say or quenching the spirit, and give them the option of taking the other view. That's great. The, the Greek the Greek doesn't tell you. Right. That's it's context of problem. Does that make sense? That's why I did that. Yeah, I had a professor who was trying to teach something like this, and he said he was in a at a church and someone a young lady in front of him, he could overhear her saying, you know, in a minute I'm gonna get up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna dance around, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout, and I'm gonna be dancing all over. And he said, I tapped her on the shoulder and said, No, you're not. I said, What do you mean? No, you're not. Well, uh, you're not gonna do that. It's not proper. He said, and so she said are you trying to quench the Holy Spirit? And he said, no, I'm trying to quench your spirit. <laughs> and so that was his way of, Yeah. but I think people would have trouble yeah. splicing the two. Yeah. yeah. A disposition or an attitude, the word spirit is used that way. Mm -hmm. That's why it could refer to this and it's a contextual problem. Okay. And I, and I think in all fairness and honesty, we, we need to put on stuff like this. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. That's my view. I think we ought to be as, as straightforward as we can with people. I think verse 20 now, let's take it. If you would there, Chris, please. Uh, Prophetes me exuthanete. Prophecies uh, not despise or do not despise prophecies. Okay. All right. To treat with contempt. Again, we had this problem at Corinth, didn't we? They, they didn't think prophesying was very important. And it might be that they wouldn't want, or just telling people, you don't need to do that. I'm going to get up and speak in tongues. And that would be flowery. You know, I, people who have gone to other countries sometimes will speak in the language they've learned, and people are impressed by it. And uh, people are impressed by people that can speak for several languages. And uh, but and, but prophesying is not necessarily. Of course, if you prophesy that something's going to happen in the future and it does happen, that's kind of impressive to me. Prophesying is really impressive. <laughs> but but uh, so this is the same thing. So it'd be stop um, setting it not prophecies. Yes. Stop setting it not prophecies. So I guess if you put those two together, that would be probably the Holy Spirit, because yeah. that's the one who would be telling you to prophesy and you're not doing it. I, I, I think that that's my conclusion why I made it with the Holy Spirit. Right. Again, we have made with the present imperative to stop doing it. It seems, in my notes here, it seems that we're quenching the Spirit was probably a despising in prophesying, despising prophesying. That's how they were quenching the Spirit. They were treating them as with as unimportant. We had the same problem in Corinth, see? And they, they treated it prophesying. And Paul told them in Corinth that's the most important of the, of the gifts. Prophesying is. Okay. Any questions or comments? Right. Now, he gives them another interesting instruction. And uh, Shane, are you are you translating tonight, or are you are you just listening? I can do it. 
You can translate for us? Uh-huh. Did you say no or yes? Yes. You said yes. 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 Okay. Take verse 21 if you would, Shane. Panta de duki mazete to kalan kate kete. Prove, prove all, but prove all things, prove all things, but hold to that, hold to the things which are good. Yeah. Okay, now remember there's two words for good in the Greek, akathos, and that, uh, that is good morally, and kalos, that is good because it has everything it's supposed to have. And that's the word that's used for someone who's good looking. Okay, so you won't say a woman is beautiful, you use kalos. Okay, or kale, feminine. Doki mat that zate, ete, and then you, omen ete usi, so that's you. But you, or and you, examine or prove. Now, this is a word that's used for ors to check an R to test it to see if it's genuine. And so that might fit in with the prophesying, say, as well. Could be. And that you examine the evidence for the prophets. The prophets were to be tested in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, 14, 29, and 1 John 4, 1. So it might be saying, all right, check these fellows out that are prophesying. And you're going to see that they're giving you God's word. That's real important. And it might might get the the problem of the despising prophesying, treating it as contempt or less valuable. Okay. Be directed at that. So examine everything, and then when you do, hang on to what's good. And again, that's good in the sense that it has, it's harmonious and it's complete and it has uh, all of its parts balanced and proportionate. Now think about this a moment. If we had a prophet prophesying, everything he preached would have to be harmonious with everything else they already knew from God's word, wouldn't it? Okay. So that's in Deuteronomy 13, Deuteronomy 18, the Jews, are required to test any any person who claimed to be a prophet to test him by the scriptures. In other words, he can't teach anything that contradicts the Bible. If he does, he's a false prophet. So hold fast anything that you learn and is good from, from your proving of it, testing it. And the, the test that we would have, or that they would have, is it would have to harmonize and it couldn't conflict, contradict anything in the Old Testament, all of those books, and it couldn't, it couldn't contradict anything that any books that they had already had revealed. I don't know if there were other books that had been written at this time, uh, what books they would have been, but if there were other New Testament books already in print and they had them, these prophets could not contradict those books. Does that make sense? That would be one way of proving. And of course, there would have to be internal consistency in his own teaching and, and, and any signs that he gave would have to actually come about. Again, that's Deuteronomy 13, Deuteronomy 18. Any questions or comments? We, we see that used in Revelation 2, right? Where they tested those who said they were apostles but found out they weren't. So this is that yeah. gift of... Yes. Discerning of spirits. Yes, the discerning of spirits. That, I think that's First John four one, I believe, and other passages. Okay. Hold fast to anything that you learn that is good from your proving of it. And I think it's probably testing the prophet or prophetess, to make sure they're truly prophets or prophetesses. But prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Now, notice the word but. Let's go back and look. Day, see, day. So let's the word day is not really translated here. I went ahead and translated it and because day is in there, 
and it links it with what went before. And of course, the translators have verse 21 as part of the sentence of verse 20 and, and before. And it continues on, the American Standard Translators do. See, the King James doesn't, however, okay? Right? Now, let's go with verse 22, and we're back to, uh, I guess we just got four. Uh, James, can you translate verse 22? Is there anybody else in here that's, that's translating in the class? Okay, James, can you take verse 22 for us? James? Sorry, I had it on mute. Okay. Apopantos edus poneru apekesta. And I translated that from all forms of evil, distance yourself. From all forms of evil. Right? Yes, sir. So abstain from it, distance yourself, have yourself away from it, have yourself from it, see? It's from oppo and echo to have from, to be away or absent. Okay, distance yourself from these things. From every form. All right. The appearance is okay instead of form. Yeah. Form or appearance. It's an external appearance. It's a kind of things, the thing that's. Now let's look at the word evil here. That's poneros, poneros. That's something that's, in a physical, ethical sense, is wicked or bad, and it's laborious. He's abstaining, telling them or instructing them to abstain from every kind of evil. Of course, evil is defined by the Word of God, so we have to go to the Scriptures. He intends for them to reject any person who claims to be a prophet, and after being tested, he's found to be a false prophet. I think that's one of the things that he's, uh, that would be an evil thing. If I claimed to be a prophet and I wasn't, that would be an evil thing that I was doing. I had a, uh, if we have time, I will, I will get through a confrontation here in Oklahoma City I had with a false prophet. Okay. All right, let's go to verse 23. Uh, a comment, if I could. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Come. Yeah, I, I lean toward distance yourself. Abstain is not to do something, but but that doesn't keep you from getting very near it. Yeah, yes. Because, you know, like fire, I can get real near it, but as long as I don't get burnt, I'm okay. <laughs> you know? So that's why I lean toward distance yourself versus abstain. You know, I thought that was more. Or distance long. yourself according to the fire too. It does. Hold yourself off from it, see. I think your point is well made there. Thank you, James. Yes, sir. Let's tell you verse 23. You might not finish this tonight, but we'll try. All right. Uh, go ahead, Jerry. Do you want the whole one or just part of it since it's a long one? Whichever one. Uh, why don't you why don't you go down to here? Okay. Okay. Atos de Othios, Othios, Tes, Irenes, Agasai, Humas, Olo Teles, but may the God Himself, the one of peace, sanctify you wholly or completely. God of peace. Notice the word peace has the article probably indicating something in the context. That would be a harmony or concord, see? And so maybe there wasn't concord in the church in the sense that some were despising prophesying. Okay. That would that would cause a little bit of discord in the church. Right. Particularly, the sanctify is to 
is to separate you completely. This may go back to what James was saying, separate yourself from evil, get away from it, anything that's evil. Don't have anything to do with it. Now, Wesleyans teach this, uh, the doctrine of the second working of grace, and it's one of their passages they use for it, to wholly sanctify you. Sanctification, I believe, is a lifelong process, and we, as we grow, we become even more separate and separating our minds and our actions from the world. So uh, sanctification is that separation that we have. And, but I think it's a lifelong growth process. I think we grow in it. I think that's the simple explanation, sanctify you holy. You haven't grown enough and you're not separating yourself enough from the world, from these worldly ideas. Okay. Any questions or comments? The Wesleyan's doctrine of second work of grace is you uh, you have uh, your sins taken away and then uh, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit at some later time you have uh, your total depravity taken away. I think that's their, their view. Okay. Questions? All right. Well, it's real hard. Chris, I hate to do this to you. Can you take the rest of the verse? Sure. Kai, Holo, Kala, Kalearon, Homon, To, Numa, Kai, He, Suke, Kai, To, Soma, Amer, Patos, In, Te, Perusia. To Curio Ahamon Jesus Christu Terethane Um I have and entirely you're the spirit and the soul and the body. I put in parentheses be kept blameless in the coming or the presence of the Lord or the Lord of us, Jesus Christ. I be preserved. Okay. Be kept blameless. Be preserved mm -hmm. or guarded. Mm -hmm. okay. Your spirit and your soul. Uh, we have a question about some people think the soul and the spirit are the same thing. I think there's a difference, but we'll not get into it in further detail here. But uh, this almost tells me that they're different. Okay, they're equal a rank with going John by Kai. He preserved entire. Now that's to, from Tereo to guard. That's the optative. Optative mood is a, is a what? Remember? Uh, something that, that we look forward to. We wish. It's a wish. Optive is a wish. This is usually for a wish. It's a desire of the mind, a wish. Okay? So I, I want you to be preserved. It's my desire that you do this. Be entire preserved without any blame. Uh, that there's no cause to be censured at the coming. Now, if they were quenching the spirit, quenching the despising prophesying, there was some blame there. So this kind of exhorts them to go back and rethink this action that you're doing here and put it away and go back to what you ought to be doing at, at the coming. Now remember, parousia is the coming, and it we have on the, under my notes on 219, we have a, a series of notes on that, which uh, you might look at more thoroughly. I think it's the second coming of our Lord here. And he's called the Lord Curios. That's a benevolent Lord. Jesus means Savior. Christ is the only one. I've translated in the very God of peace himself, sanctify you holy, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved entire without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Any questions? 
Next one, back to uh, Shane. Shane, could you take verse 24 for us? Shane? Uh, James, can you take verse 24? Yes, sir. Okay. Pistos ho kalon humas pos kai poyese. And uh, I translated verse 24 as uh, faithful is the one calling you who will perform it. Okay. Faithful is the one calling you. And Cologne is a participle, is present yes, participle. Yes, sir. With an article that it will be the one calling you. And he will also do it. So probably doing it would go back to verse 23. Sanctify you, keep you separate. All right. All right. Now. Verses 25 through 28, uh, Paul's salutation. Okay, go ahead. Uh, if we would, Jerry, could you take this? Okay. Adelphoi, prosu, keste, peri, humas. Brethren, pray for us. It's hey, mom. Okay. Humas. Oh. Okay, it must be you. Rather than pray for concerning us, okay, pray for us, right? So we pray for us, and this is, of course, an imperative mood verb as well. So what does that mean? That's it's imperative mood, he tells them to do it. That means they had already been doing it, see? Keep on praying for us. Now, this is middle passive form, and so it could be middle. I think I take it as middle voice. They're doing it themselves. They're, they themselves are doing the praying for or on behalf of us. That would be Paul and Silas <coughs> and one, anybody else with you, perhaps T Timothy as well. Okay. Now, let me go back and tell you something else. Timothy was young. And they might have been despising his youth and not allowing him to prophesy when he, when he had been there. Okay, he's too young. Okay. That's a possibility. That no man despise thy youth. In the context, we can see it applying to, to Timothy as well. That's a possibility. Again, we just don't know for sure. I'm just surmising, assuming something. All right, verse 26. Now, Jerry, did you do the last one? Yes. Uh, Chris, would you do verse 26 for us? Yes. Aspas sete tus adelphus pontus in phile metai hagio. So I have uh, you all greet the brothers all with a kiss holy. With the holy kiss. You all greet all the brothers with the holy kiss. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, when I was in Russia, the Christian men kissed me on the cheek. Did, did they do that to you in Romania? Yeah. I, I tried to get my hand out real quick, but yeah, it's still, it's still come that way. Yeah. Yeah. They meant it well. Yeah. They were very friendly. Yeah. It, it wasn't on the lips, it was no. on the cheek. No. And the women didn't kiss me. On the cheek, but the men did. Mm -hmm. So, and the women would hug each other and kiss each other on the cheek. See? So that was, I think, that was a holy kiss. And it's just like our shaking hands. I don't think we have to do that. I think it's just we need to show affection for each other and common respect for one another. Any questions? Anybody got a question there, comment? Right. Verse 27, if we would, 
Uh, Shane, are you, are you there? We, we lost you. Okay. I think you lost me. I can't Shane? see the screen. I can't even see the screen now for some reason. So go ahead without me. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, James, can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, 1st Thessalonians 5.27. Could you read it? If you would. Okay. Uh, Bokizo humas ton kurion anag nos thenai tain epistolain pasin tois hagiois adelphois. And I translated that I implore you by the Lord to read the letter to all the holy brothers. Okay. Our kids, though, is to make an oath, and uh, it's the word that's used uh, when they some of those try to cast out demons and oath it out all right it's not ever used for true casting out of demons however but uh so uh, what they did is uh, i jury you the american standard reads i charge you how did you translate it james i'm sorry i implore you implore you okay uh, that's probably good too it's uh, to make you Put you to an oath, say, implore, injure you, conjure you, uh, by the Lord, say, that this epistle be read, that this epistle be read, to be read, and that's present, that's aorist infinitive. And uh, this word reading is very interesting here. It's anagonosco. And so it's not just reading of the scriptures. Uh, we we had uh, a man that thought we ought to read the scriptures in the, in the auditorium, and I think that's correct. But if you study this word out more fully, it meant originally to persuade or to, when you read it, you also explained it. Right? Bullinger on the screen up here tells us that. It's more than just reading the scriptures, it's explaining them. So that's what I do when I preach. I will read them and explain them. In that sense, I'm reading the scriptures. And so he's not just saying read this epistle, but make sure they understand it. The holy, under all the holy brethren. Okay. So, and you might look at the, what's on the screen up here. Uh, it meant originally to persuade, and that's a uh, Bullinger. Then to know well, to gather exact knowledge about, hence to read. But later used to extend the reading to reading aloud with comments so as to persuade others. So let him to read it means that let him that reads and comments on these words in the center take care to understand them. Be sure he understands what he's reading. So uh, it's more than just reading. Okay. It has to be explained. Our man uh, will maybe read a passage of scripture and he might and he will actually explain it to us. For the Lord's Supper, sometimes public reading of Scripture means Scripture were given by the one reading it. Okay, and he explained it. The meaning of what was given by the one reading. I charge you by the Lord that this is be read unto the brethren. All right. All right. Verse twenty-eight. Who read last? Was it James? Yes, sir. Uh, Jerry, could you read it for us? Okay. Hikaris to Kuriu Hemon Yesu Christu Meth Humon Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and up at all, so it be plural. Amen. You is plural, yes. You all. Amen. And uh, so. He's wanting the favor of the Lord to be with him. That's what grace means. Be with him. They were already in the same condition, but he's wanting them to be favored. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now again, we see Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the order of the words is the emphasis. So he's stressing the benevolent lordship of Jesus and him being a savior and then him being Messiah, the anointed one. Amen or amen is from a Hebrew word, 
which means it's firm or established. Right? Any questions? <coughs> I think there's a textual variant there on that, but notice the text that's found here, uh, the majority text, and all of the other manuscripts that support that. So I translate this, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, amen. And you is plural, of course, okay. Are there any questions? All right. Here is a link here. You can go to it. Uh, First Thessalonians introduction, Bible org. It's got an outline of it. The book of First Thessalonians is discussed with Greek notes in Vaughn and Gideon, a book that I cite as well. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Now, what we're going to do with this, I want to email you the, the file on this, and uh, we will end the class right here now, because I'm not going to pick up another book right now. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to send you the book of Philemon in the Greek, and we'll work on the book of Philemon starting next week. Okay. As soon as we finish Philemon, I think I can be through with 2 Thessalonians and we'll go back to 2 Thessalonians at that time. About half through with 2 Thessalonians. And we'll go to 2 Thessalonians. But we'll put Philemon in between here. It'll take us two or three weeks to cover it. All right? And I've enjoyed it. I hope you've gotten been edified by it. You've helped me. I've learned from you and hopefully we'll all learn from each other.